So fun fact, today in Turkey is actually Zafer Bayramı, which is like victory day. It's the last war of the Turco, no wait, Turk Greco war. The war between the Turks and the Greeks, okay? And I thought a way that I would celebrate is try to speak as much Turkish as I can today. I think traveling alone, it's not really, it's kind of hard to find opportunities to speak the language outside of like restaurants and just random interactions with strangers on like public transport and stuff like that but i thought you know what let's do it so right now i'm on the way to turkcell because i have a problem with my turkish sim card don't know how i'm gonna explain this i guess we'll see my goal is just to not speak any english i always tell people when they realize that i'm a foreigner and they ask like where are you from that i listen i never never tell them that i'm from the u.s i always say that i'm either portuguese or brazilian because my last name makes that pretty feasible so no english <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. Mesela şu an ben uh, Turkcell mağazaya gidiyorum çünkü sim kartım <laughs> çalışmıyor. Bugün İzmir'de çok çok sıcak ama sorun değil çünkü ben Floridalıyım. I'm from Florida. Uh, ve alışım. Sevmiyorum ama alışım. Aslında ben tek başıma yapabilirim, tek başıma yükleyebilirim ama bilmiyordum o yüzden manzaya gittim ama şimdi oldu çalışıyor. Now that I think about it biraz açım. Bir tane tavuk İskender. Evet. Şöyle. So this is Turkish money by the way. Ataturk is literally on every single note. Even if there's another guy on the back, Ataturk is always on the front. I mean, and with good reason, you know, because they really do love him here. He did a lot for Turkey and for Turkish people. But it's just interesting, like from a Yabancı perspective, coming from the United States, we don't have like any one person that we really praise that much. I mean, sure we praise like our founding, founding fathers, but it's just like we're not that passionate about it. And also it was like a lot longer ago than everything that happened with Turkey. Like, Ataturk lived until 1938, I believe, so it's still very recent, you know, very recent history. People are very passionate about Ataturk. Ataturk love is real. Child, so I got me some Iskender, Tabuk Iskender. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. We got Bir Kutu Pepsi, because they didn't have Coke. Kok Yok. Isn't that catchy? Kok Yok. So I'm just going to take me a first bite, actually. That's chicken. It just looks like like shredded chicken, honestly, with tomato, some type of like tomato-based sauce on it. Oh wait, there's bread in here too. There's like chopped up pieces of. Okay, so let's try. Turkish people put yogurt on everything. It's good. Is that all that it is? Though I'm not trying to like minimize it. It is really good, but I think I don't know. You always expect that food in foreign countries is always like çok farklı, right? But this is very. I feel like I could get this in the U.S. somewhere. Let's see if the Pepsi tastes Turkish. Wow, so Turkish, love it. So in Turkish, the prayer call is called the Ezan. Five times a day though. That's one of the the pillars of Islam is to pray five times a day. Wow, burada ne oldu? Şimdi Bostanlıya gidiyoruz. Bir hafta önce ben arkadaşımla Bostanlıya gittim. I visited him. I forget how to say visit. It's like something etmek. Everything is always something etmek. It's got to be like I think the most useful, the most useful verb in Turkish is etmek. I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Ama şimdi burada çok insanlar var. I don't know what this thing is called, but it's pretty and people love to take pictures with it. So to get from here to Bostanla, we have to take a ferry, which in Turkish is not ferry boat. Ferry boat daha büyük. A ferry in Turkish is called vapur which comes from French, apparently. It's very easy to travel around Izmir because they use this thing called the Izmirim cart for literally everything. You can use it for the buses, the tram, the ferries, the subway, literally everything. And with this machine, this is what you use to fill it up. I'm just gonna put in 20 lira because I'm actually leaving Izmir today, so it doesn't make sense to load it up a lot. <laughs> It's so crazy because it literally it feels like an airplane. I don't know how to say airplane. Airplane giving. So this is Central Izmir and we're going over there. I mean I get that it's victory. 
victory day, but like, damn. Tamam, sanırım um, burada karşıya kaçar şu sen. Bana ne kadar? Hangi şey? Ha? Hangi şey? Um, bu. Beş. Beş. Teşekkürler. Bro, I don't even know why I just bought this. Bu kitapçı parladı. Birinci katta kitapçı var ama ikinci katta kafe var. Çok güzel bir yer. I have already come to this bookstore twice actually. The first time was with my friend Tamar when I was visiting him. This is my third time but I just love it so much. And the first time I was here I bought some children's books. Or just one. I got um, Dev Shiftali which is James and the Giant Peach, but in Turkish. Something I find so interesting when you go to like bookstores around the world is specifically with this series, the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series, it's always really interesting how they translate a wimpy kid. So in Turkish, saf means like pure or kind of like innocent. So this means like kind of an innocent, naive person. Saftirik, no saftirik. There we go. That's a bit different from the original meaning of a wimp in English, which is like a weak person. That's why immersion is so cool though, because after I learned the word saf, I saw it on like a toothpaste tube or some kind of cosmetic at the Airbnb that I'm staying at. And I was like, ah. So yeah, I wish that I was traveling with more than just my backpack because I cannot fit any more books. <laughs> I have no room for anything. So let's just go to the second floor. Sanırım soğuk bir içecek istiyorum. <laughs> the thing about portakal suyu in Turkey is that it's really really orange. I'm not gonna steal this pen because I don't like this kind of pen, but easy crossword puzzles. Dude, why does the word fun and funny, why does that beat Turkish people's ass? I don't know, I mean it's the same thing for me because I can never remember the difference between Elenja and Elenjeli but it's just really, yeah, funny way to learn new English words. What's funny about this? It's fun, but it's not funny. Anyways, I guess some orange juice going. So I bought this book as kind of like a way to learn backwards because as you can see the words are like the clues are all in Turkish and so I'm just filling it in in English. I've gotten pretty good at this, I think I can finish one in like six to seven minutes now i mean not that's that, that doesn't mean that i know every single word but i go through i do the ones that i can and then i fill in the rest based on like just hunches and then i circle the ones that i don't know and sometimes i have to look them up but i do pretty good by myself round after I would say like three to four minutes. This is the majority so I'm very happy with this especially because I don't know all of these words. I don't use all of these words but I can guess a lot of them. Like for example I had never seen the word buyumek before but it sounds like buyuk which is big. So I guessed to go because it was right next to go with gitmek so I was thinking hmm if you make something big you're growing it because this obviously looks like a verb so it had to be something like that. I also guessed that gürütülü means noisy because gürütü is a noise and this like this suffix lü usually means like filled with that thing or like characteristic of that thing. This one, 19 across, it says kalp. I'm guessing that it's going to be heart because I don't know, that's the only word I can think of with five letters and H and an A. I kind of just give up at this point and start looking up stuff in the dictionary. So it turns out I was right about kalp, so I'm counting that one as I got it right. But look, I literally only had to look up nine of these words out of 25, so I'm giving myself a 16 out of 25. That's pretty good. It's on the protocol suit. I have a feeling that I'm going to grow out of the easy crossword puzzles book very quickly so I went ahead and bought the medium level as well. Obviously I don't know every single word in the easy book still but I'm just preparing for the time when I do and I can't find these books back in the US, you know? America's a book that you can find in We are working to keep Izmir greener. That's why Turkish is crazy though, because it's literally more green Izmir with we are working. Are we, what does that mean? Are we working to keep Izmir greener? I'm guessing that's what that means. Bugün bir tatil sanırım. O yüzden herkes dışarıda. Is that how you say it? Everybody's outside? Çok insanlar dışarıda.
pazara gidiyoruz çünkü ben meyve istiyorum burada kim var altı çarışı merhaba yarım kilo yarım kilo uşak sen evet uşak I've been walking here for like 20 minutes no bakeries which is so weird there's a lot of like carts selling like simit but I don't know man the way they talked about boyos they made it seem like it'd be on every corner but I feel like it's all about simit I knew that if I kept a good mindset and persevered it would come out of here with boyos so this will be my first boyos maybe my last if it's not good but i think it will be because i love jewish food looks very normal looks promising flaky is it just pastry is there anything like in it i don't know why i got two if i wasn't sure that i'd like it so it's very flaky almost too flaky is that a thing it's just like tony starking in my fucking hands as i eat it like i have dandruff or something i gotta be a real influencer hold up it's a uh, salty I was expecting it to be sweet for some reason. I wish I had like some pistachio filling or like some cinnamon or something. Like a brown sugar filling maybe would be really good. It's good though. You know what has been the best part about learning Turkish while I'm in Turkey? It's just absorbing everything and like losing count of how much I'm learning. I think that's the most enthralling part about immersion. It's just like you don't really keep tabs so much on what you know and what you don't know anymore it kind of just it all blends together because when i first got here i was keeping like a list of all the words that i learned today and like it was very systematic because i just didn't expect to learn so much but i'm learning so much it's kind of scary but like good scary i think there is such thing as too flaky this is too flaky at a certain point you gotta just like be humble you know like this is not a humble amount of flakage this is like head and shoulders at some point the layers just are not practical anymore so this is an example of humility, not show-offiness. Sheftali, a peach. How do you say humble in Turkish? I gotta wash this off a little bit. I'm telling y'all, Turkish peaches hit different. I don't know what, I think it's just because it's the season here. I don't know how they cultivate them, but they're like 80 million times better. It's like juicier than an orange. Um, that was a realistic day in my life traveling in Turkey. So I hope you enjoyed it. And good Bye.